I'm Tim Tyler and this is a video about memes and the evolution of human ultrasociality. Humans are ultrasocial creatures. They live in large cities and often congregate in huge numbers at social events of various kinds. Humans do not normally bristle with hostility on encountering other humans and indeed are likely to engage in cooperative behaviour with them and even with strangers. Memetics offers an interesting explanation of human cooperation and ultrasociality. The idea is that meme reproduction depends on social contact between humans. Increased levels of social contact between their hosts are good for memes since this results in more reprodu reproductive opportunities for them. Memes that promote human ultrasociality have the effect of pushing humans into close proximity with each other so that the memes can infect new hosts. All the memes in the host benefit from this, including the ultrasociality memes themselves. Ultrasocial humans collect more memes than less sociable humans do, and since memes are on average beneficial, memes promoting ultrasociality can have the effect of increasing the genetic fitness of their human hosts by allowing them to collect more memes. So the hosts are typically eager to embrace ultrasociality producing memes, and would eventually evolve some degree of ultrasociality anyway in meme rich environments. Over time, the ultrasociality trait gradually begins to migrate into their germline via the classical process of genetic assimilation, so that learning it slowly becomes easier. Memeplexes also tend to favour the incorporation of ultrasociality memes into them. Ultrasociality memes offer a double fitness boost to memes that they have mimetic linkage with. The first boost is due to being linked to the fit ultrasociality memes, and the second bo boost is due to being more likely to be spread around by the ultrasocial hosts of the ultrasocial memes. Memes in memeplexes are thus likely to welcome ultrasociality memes into the fold. Large scale group behaviour is a key component of many religions. In masses, a large mass of humans congregates and engages in a festival of meme exchange. Church services are regular mini-masses. Since memes are stored in fallible human memory and benefit from frequent rehearsal, the meme repetition that takes place at masses and church congregations is also beneficial to them. While such religious ceremonies may offer benefits to the humans that engage in them, they seem to be orchestrated by the memes and it's probably mostly the memes that benefit from them. Religions also promote social behaviour in another way, by actively promoting proselytising. This essentially involves approaching strangers and attempting to spread your memes to them and bring them into the flock. This is a particularly blatant attempt by the memes to use host resources to further their own reproductive ends by infecting new hosts. An understanding of how memes causes humans to form masses and congregations and to engage in proselytising looks as though it will form an important part of a naturalistic theory of religion. As far as I know, links between memes and human prosocial behaviour and cooperation were first proposed by Donald Campbell in a 1983 article entitled The Two Distinct Routes Beyond Kin Selection to Ultrasociality. The theme was taken up by Francis Haligan in 1992 and expanded on him, expanded on by him over the years. However, neither author really got the idea described here. The idea was eventually clearly spelled out and popularised by Susan Blackmore in 1997 article entitled The Power of the Meme Meme, and she has two whole chapters about mimetic theories of altruism in her 1999 mimetics book. So here's chapter 12, A Mimetic Theory of Altruism. And chapter 13, The Altruism Trick. Recently, the idea that mimetic evolution drove the evolution of human ultrasociality has been the subject of much experimental work and several books by Herbert Gintis, Peter Richardson, Robert Boyd, Joseph Henrich and others. While there is now a consensus that gene meme coevolution is primarily responsible for human ultrasociality, alas, many of the academic researchers involved have ignored the simple and beautiful mimetic hypothesis given here, and have instead adopted what appears to be a highly implausible model based on group selection. As an illustration of this neglect, in 2000, a review of Why Humans Cooperate was published by Boyd and Richardson, and in there there's a broad review of classes of hypotheses that have been proposed to account for the phenomenon, and the mimetics-based hypothesis described here doesn't even get mentioned. The mimetic explanation given here does not claim to be responsible for all prosocial behaviour. 
that standard evolutionary accounts of prosocial behaviour attribute it to kin selection, reciprocal altruism, virtue signalling, cooperating to perform demanding tasks and mating behaviour. Some other hypotheses also help to explain human cooperation, so humans sometimes manipulate other humans into cooperating. For example, this is done with the fake kin groups collected by, created by military uniforms and school uniforms, which are used to encourage cooperation based on perceived relatedness. Also, humans may sometimes overgeneralize the moral that it pays to be nice to other people and behave in an irrationally nice manner. This effect could be magnified in the, in the unusual modern ecosystems in which humans find themselves, where they meet large numbers of people who are not really members of their own tribe. However, the mimetic explanation that I've just described appears to apply to most of the cases in which humans cooperate where chimpanzees do not. The mimetic explanation of human ultrasociality should be one of the triumphs of the field. At the moment, I think it is fair to say that it is not widely recognised or understood. That plainly needs to change. There's more about memes and human ultrasociality in my book on mimetics, which is now available. Enjoy!